Hello, we are in Unit 2, Module 1, and today you're looking at the Session 4 Home Connection. Please begin. Uh, put your name on it. Put your class number on it. Uh, that's always great. Date? Well, it's up to you. For each rectangle below, label the dimensions. Now, let's stop right there. What are dimensions? If you're not sure what that word means, then being able to use them could be really difficult. If you're going to find the area of something, you have to know its dimensions, which would be how many units tall, how many units wide. Okay? And so we're usually focusing on two numbers, the height and the width. Okay? Just to make sure that we're all on the same page. So those are our dimensions. So it says, label the dimensions, <clears throat> find the area, and write an equation to describe the array. So once you know the dimensions, this is six rows tall, and this is a decimeter, or this is 10 units across, right? Uh, we know to find the area, you multiply the height times the width, okay? So if you do that, six times 10, you get 60 square units. Now, just to make sure we're on the same page, square units, Right? Why do we need that word square? Because we're talking about area. We're talking about how many squares would fit inside this area. Or so our area is the number of squares that would fit inside. So you have to label it square. So if you ever have a problem that says, what is the area? You know it's going to be a number of square somethings. Okay? Could be uh, centimeters. It could be miles, kilometers. But it has to be square. Okay? To put the equation in there, well, we already said it. We take our 6 units times our 10 units, and we end up with 60 square units. Now, if there's another way you need to do it, we could do other equations, but let's start with what we have here. On A, let's count the number of units tall that we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You're new. So we have 8 tall. We have a decimeter across. You could count it. But if you ever have a solid line, we know that that's going to be a representation of 10. Okay, I'm going to skip this for now because basically you just take your answer from here and you put it here. But for right now, let's set up our equation. We would have 8 times what? Times 10. I'm going to let you write the answer in. Okay, you're going to put it here. But make sure you write square units at the end. Okay, and then you're going to put that whatever that answer is in this box. Pause this video if you need to so that you can catch up and get ahead, okay? Now, letter B. Count how many units tall we are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Label it. And then once again, what do we have here? A decimeter or maybe ten units. Now, this is interesting. We have ten on the top. We have 10 on the top. We have 10 on the top. Hmm, what's that all about? Well, what's the name of our assignment? More multiplying by 10. Okay, so we're going to be doing a lot of work with 10 today. Let's set up our equation to find area. We multiply the what? Hopefully you said dimensions. So I have 7 times 10 is 70. Don't forget to label it. Square units. And then uh, you're going to move that answer into this box. Make sure you do that. Pause this video if you need to. All right, bottom of the page. Here we go. This is where it gets a little interesting. Now, as I look at this, I have a decimeter down, so I have 10 units down. But then they have it kind of broken up along the top. We have a 10, a 1, 2, 3. So we have 3 there. Mmm, that's interesting. We could think of this as... Uh, 10 and 10 and 10 and 3. Maybe we should do that. We have 10 times 10 and then plus 10 times 3. So if we equal these out, what do I have? 100 there, 30 here. If I add both of those together, what do I get? 130. That's interesting. What if I just combine 10 plus 3? What is 10 plus 3? That'd be 13, so I could maybe rewrite it like this whole thing is 13, and then I just take 10 times 13. What would that be? Well, we know if we take any number times 10, we're going to put an extra what on the end. 
a zero. So I take that number, add a zero, and what do you know? They're both the same. So I have 130 what? Square units. Make sure you write it down there, and then you're going to put that in the previous box. Okay? Two different ways to get the same answer. Sometimes this is a little bit easier to get your brain going, but sometimes if you're working with tens, it might be just as easy to know how uh, long the longest side is. Okay? As I turn this over, on page two, uh, it says write a multiplication equation or story problem in each empty box to complete the table. Here's an example. It says Sarah has five dimes. How much money does she have? Well, we know a dime is 10 cents, and she has five of them. So if I multiply five times 10, I end up with 50 cents. So it says Jamie has 12 dimes in his pocket. How much money does he have? Well, how many do we have? 12. Uh, how much is a dime worth? 10 cents. So if I multiply 12 times 10, what do I get as an answer? Do you remember what we do? We take uh, 12 and then put the zero on the end, and then I have 120 cents, which is also the same, in case you're wondering, as what? A dollar 20. Okay? You can think of it as 120 pennies, right? 120 cents. But that is the same as a dollar twenty. Okay. Larry had sixteen dimes in his collection of old coins. How much money does he have? Once again, we have dimes again. How unusual! But wait a second, that makes sense. More multiplying by ten, and in our currency, if we're talking about coins, the dime is what represents our ten, right? So sixteen times ten would be one hundred sixty. You could label it cents or similar, just like I, I talked about before. A 160 pennies would be the same as a dollar 60, okay? Because 100 um, pennies would give you a dollar, and then you have 60 cents left over, right? <clears throat> now you have to come up with a problem here. What I would encourage you to do is to keep in mind that the dime is a very important part of the story. So whatever you write as your story here, it must use a dime. You could say, my baby sister um, has 30 dimes. How much money does she have? And the answer is $3. It is also 300 cents, right? $3 is the same as 300 pennies, right? So that I'm gonna let you do. You can come up, be as creative as you want in creating your problem. And you can pause this video whenever you want. Uh, on letter D, similar situation. There's my dime, so we know in our story we're talking about dimes. How many of them are there? 21, right? So you say, my dog ate uh, 21 dimes. How much money did my dog eat, right? $2.10, okay? Pause this video if you need to. Dana has only nickels in her hand. And Aja has exactly the same number of dimes and no other coins. Together, they have a total of 90 cents. Woo! So we have got to figure out a pretty challenging problem. Dana, okay, only has nickels, which are five cents, okay? Aja has exactly the same number of dimes and no other coins. So let's put Aja, okay? And she has dimes, which are each worth 10 cents. How are we gonna figure this out? We know that if we add up the number of dimes and the number of nickels, that we have a total of 90 cents. Could we guess? Well, I guess we sort of could. Let's, let's, let's try to figure this out just by maybe just playing with the numbers a bit. Here I'm going to have a little a little group, a place to put nickels, okay? And over here I'm going to have a little area where I can put dimes, okay? So if I said I have one dime and one nickel, I would have 15 cents, right? Okay? If I had two dimes and two nickels, well now I have 20 plus 10, that would be 30 cents. So, oh, this almost looks like I have a ratio table started, but let's do one more just to check. 
if if one had a dime and the other one had a nickel, then I have 30 cents plus 15. Well, that's 45 cents. Do you see what's happening here? Every time I give Dana and Aja one of their coins, I go up by how much? I go up by 15. So this is when they each have one. This is when they each have two. I don't even have to make the marks here to know that if I give them each three, 45 plus 15 is 60. And have I gotten to 90 yet? Not yet. I have to keep going. If I give them each four coins, I have 75. I'm still not there yet. If I give each of them five coins, 75 plus 15 is 90. <gasps> There's my number. I finally got to 90 cents. So if I give each of them five of their own coins, I would have uh, 50 cents here, because 5 times 10 is 50, and then 5 times 5 is 25. So our 50 cents plus our 25 cents, well, that's 75. Wait, my number's off, isn't it? 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 10 is 50. Uh-oh, I'm having issues here. 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, my goodness, I got off a number. This was 3. <laughs> this was 4. This is 5. This is 6. <laughs> so I should have one extra here. Isn't it a good thing we check our scores? Uh, so if I have 6 times 10, I have 60 cents. And then if I have 6 times 5, I have... 30 cents. If I combine both of them, I have 90 cents, which is exactly what they're supposed to have. So if you're going to answer this question, how many coins is each person holding? How many coins do we count for each? They each have six coins. Sorry there, but I didn't couldn't read my own handwriting down there. I just got off a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I should have drawn a table. That would have helped quite a bit. Okay, um, hopefully... Uh, you're doing well with your story problems. Hopefully on the front you're feeling good about your equations. Always, as usual, ask your teacher if you have questions.